Hello ladies and gentle ladies and welcome back to another Forge modding tutorial for Minecraft 1.20 and in this tutorial we are going to be covering ticking block entities so let's just get started so the first thing we want to do is you want to register your normal stuff so I've registered a block item here and I registered the block here with a new class for the block. So that is an example ticking block. And then I've registered a block entity just like we did in the previous tutorial. So I've gone ahead and registered that here with the example ticking block entity class. And in this just example ticking block class, I've done exactly what we did in the previous tutorial. I've just made it extend block, implement entity block, and I've overridden a new block entity returning our block entity in it dot block entity type uh, dot get dot create so that creates our block entity then in the block entity class it is just a very basic class extending block entity with our constructor exactly the same as what we did in the previous tutorial so now we can move on to actually ticking and how do we make it tick so unfortunately we can't just override a tick method as you may hope um, unfortunately we we can't do that anymore that is an old thing so we actually have to say in our block that we want our block entity to tick so let's come into our block class now since we are implementing this entity block interface we can use this get ticker method so what we're going to want to do is override that method get ticker and we will just rename these parameters this method is going to be fairly simple really all we want to do is return now we want to first say not level dot is client side or actually no we'll just say um return level dot is client side now if it is we're just going to say null if it's not then we're going to use these parameters here and you can rename these if you want to so like you have level zero as the first one you would have the position as the second one you have a state as the third one and then you also have the actual block entity as the fourth one all you need to do really is to just say example ticking block entity and we're going to cast that to the block entity and all you want to do is dot tick and then if you create that method so create method and boom that will work now that is one way you can do it and that's personally the way that i like to do it however there is another way too uh, actually there's quite a few ways so what you could also do is make your block class implement block entity oh we already got implements there you go block entity ticker of example ticking block entity and if you do that that allows you to override a tick method which just takes in these four parameters here and then you can do the ticking in your block class i personally wouldn't recommend doing ticking in your block class because that doesn't really make sense so you can also just go ahead and implement that on your block entity class so if you come into the block entity you can go implement block entity ticker of that class and then you can implement that tick method however i don't really like going doing it this way and the reason i don't like doing it like this is because that means you have a method inside of your block entity that has a parameter of your block entity which doesn't really make sense it's a bit weird it also gives you the level the block pause and the state which you don't need because you can just do this dot level uh, this dot get level and you can also do this dot block position to get the block position and likewise you can do this dot get block state to get the block state so i don't think this really makes sense to do it like this and that's why i like to just do it this way now there is an alternative way which i actually do in my personal mods and that is to cre just create an interface which would allow you to do this a lot simpler so if you go ahead and do uh, inside of block entity if we create a new package i'll just call this util and in here if i create a new class and i name this something like tickable block entity all this needs to do really is just have a void tick method and that needs to be an interface not a class and if you do that then all you need to do is change in your block class to that and then that means you can do that now that looks exactly the same right and let's just remove this from here by the way and for now i'll remove this tick method as well but you can see that does work right it doesn't give us like an error or anything but that does mean our block entity has to implement that interface meaning all of our tickable block entities have to implement that interface which is fine i think but it does mean that every single time we have to 
do basically the exact same thing for this get ticker method, which is a bit weird, right? So what you can do in your tickable block entity class, all you want to do really is just do a public static T extends block entity and block entity ticker of type T get ticker helper. And then all you can do is pass in the level and the block entity. So we can say level level and actually just the level. We only need the level and we can actually get rid of the public because this is in an interface, which means it's public by default. Now, all we need to do basically if we've done that is just return this here. So exactly the same thing as what we have in our block class. As you can see, I've just copied it in. It's exactly the same. Now, if we do that, then all we need to do inside of our block class, so if we come back into here, is we can just change this to return tickable block entity dot get ticker helper level. And then that's much simpler for the future if we ever want to make that work. Now, actually, one thing you could do to make that even simpler is get rid of this level parameter right here. And once you've done that, you can see yeah, that's much easier and way, way simpler. And in the future, we can just repeat this much easier. All we have to do is just return this method instead of having the whole junk in uh, this thing here. So yeah, all we can do is in our block entity, we can implement tickable block entity, we can override that tick method, and then that's all we have to do. Boom, we now have a ticking block entity. So shall we test it out and see what happens? So I'm just quickly going to do a tutorial mod dot logger we don't have a logger actually that's interesting okay in that case we'll just do a basic um print line then so we'll do salt and we'll just say hello from tick. if we go ahead and give that a run so i'm going to run as debug mode so that we can change some things afterwards but yeah if we give that a run we should see that this ticks and everything should be fine all right so here we are in the game now, as you can see, I've got my window up here so that we can see the console down here. I've just cleared the console so that we can see if anything comes into the console. Now, all we got to do is grab our ticking block and we can place it down and you'll see that prints a bunch of different times. So let's check, for example, what side we're on. So if we do get level dot is client side and if we just print that, right? So if I press this hot swap button up here, you'll see it says false which means that we are constantly on the server side, which is great because our block entity should only really be ticking on the server side. One thing you actually kind of should make sure you do when ticking in a block entity is having an initial if statement saying, if this dot level is equal null, then you want to just return. That's just in case during the first tick, maybe the level could be null. It shouldn't be, but it could be. So you just want to make sure it's not. And something I also do is I say, or this.level.is client side. Once again, that shouldn't happen because of what we have in our ticker helper, where we say that it just shouldn't tick if that's the case. But just in case, maybe some other mod does some funky stuff. And just, just in case that could happen, you just want to do that anyways. And obviously you can do anything in here. So obviously you would want to do something maybe more reasonable than just checking if we're client side. A furnace, for example, does a bunch of logic with the fuel inputs, outputs, etc. And we'll cover all those different things in the future tutorials. My whole kind of next set of tutorials is going to be the same kind of thing with block entities going through uh you know items energy fluids etc etc but yeah i mean i think that's pretty much it i suppose we can maybe try and do something a little bit more complex
By the way, in terms of this hot swapping that I have here, you won't have this unless you have installed a plugin. So if you do go file and settings, and just let that load. If you come in to the plugins and you see that I have a plugin called single hot swap, which just allows you to hot swap everything. Uh, it only hot swaps the files that have changed rather than the default, which will hot swap everything. And that doesn't really work for Minecraft modding. You'll see here it says you can hot swap 50 times faster and only the file opened in the editor will be hot swapped. So yeah, if you install that plugin from the marketplace, then that will be great. And obviously the alternative would be that you come into this build menu and do a uh, build. But yeah, hot swapping single file is much better. But yeah, if we go ahead and restart the game, then we should be able to see this spawns in the pigs. Let's place our block down. And you'll see it instantly spawns a pig because obviously ticks would be zero, so it equals true. And it spawns another one, and every five seconds it will continue to spawn more and more. And you'll see it's actually spawning in the center of the block. Um, by default, it didn't do that. I did just quickly add a plus 0 0.5 on the X and the Z. Uh, that just makes it spawn in the center of the block. But yeah, that is actually it for block entity ticking. Um, so I hope you guys found it useful and if you did please do be sure to give it a like and subscribe and also if you would like to help support me continue making tutorials then you can join my patreon the link is in the description for a few dollars a month and yeah that just helps me to continue making these tutorials and also if you have any problems obviously my discord server is linked in the description below too and you can join there or you can just hang out and chat in there as well that's fine too but yeah uh, i'll see you guys in the next tutorial where we will be discussing item capabilities so i'll see you then good bye